Hi guys! I'm Erin. I'm Tom. And we are officially engaged! Wow, we didn't even practice that and it was so good. It was spot on. It was spot on. All right, so we wanted to do this video because a lot of you have been asking on Instagram um, and I decided I would do a YouTube video. I feel like I, I share a lot of stuff on Instagram, but like this video is more like longer form content. So I wanna make sure that I get all of the juicy details because Tom did an amazing job and he deserves this. Mm -hmm. Like he pulled it off like no other, um, but yet here's my ring. I don't know if it will focus in on the ring or not. Let's see. So we're just gonna do a little video on how it happened, a little background on how we met, and then where we are gonna take it from here. We have a pretty pretty intense journey ahead of us, um, but we're really excited about it. So. Mm -hmm. so Tom and I met when we were sophomores in college. We were both uh, attending Penn State. I don't know if I was gonna say University of Pennsylvania, no. We were both at Penn State, and we were uh, introduced by a mutual friend who is also like one of our very good friends still. Um, and he he was one of my childhood friends, and then he would lived on Tom's lived in Tom's building. building building building. So then when I guess we were having like a girls like I lived with a bunch of girls, and we were having like a pregame, and the boys came over, and we invited Dave, our friend, and he brought Tom with him, and we were always friends in college. Like we both kind of had like I mean we weren't we weren't like interested in each other. We weren't trying to date. I had I had like a high school boyfriend, and Tom was just like I don't know we. Were, we weren't really like. I was looking for a relationship. Yeah, we were really looking for a relationship. So we were always strictly friends. Like there was no really even like chemistry. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tom may say different. Well, I knew she always wanted me, but. <laughs> that, that is not. <laughs> oh, that is not true. Uh, but then we went to send like oh, whatever. We were friends throughout Penn State. I had ended up transferring from Penn State, and then um, Tom's originally from Connecticut, so he got a job in Philly, and came directly here after school. And I was still at Temple graduating. I took a uh, five years, so he we were talking the same age, but he graduated and moved to Philly. And then I um, was still at Temple, and he actually slid into my DMs on my personal account because Aaron Lives Hold did not exist yet. And I was out at I think I was at a bar with my one of my girlfriends, and he was just like, "Hey, like I just moved to Philly." Got time. Yeah, got time. Yeah. Yeah, a bar in Philly, um, and. He said like, hey, I just moved to Philly. Um, if you and your girlfriends would ever want to come over and come out, like that would be great. Um, it would be fun. Like I have a bunch of guy friends from Penn State. And I kind of was like, okay, like maybe we will. But also like I was just like almost graduating. I was just trying to like finish up. Um, and also like he, you didn't really give us specifics. So then you invited me to a party. Yeah. You had a party and I couldn't come. I actually, I would have gone because like I feel like at that point like we were all trying to meet each other no um, in November. And then we, I couldn't go. And then... Uh, we we were having a party at Temple at our Temple house, and I was like, "Hey, why don't you come?" But you were home for Thanksgiving break, yep. and and then you invited me to something else, and I was like, I couldn't go to that either. So I was like, "Okay, there's no way he's never gonna invite me ever again." Like I, I blew it. I, I couldn't come both of these times. Like he's never gonna invite me for a third time. But then you were like, "Hey, but we're actually having an ugly sweater party um, next week. If you want to come, all of my guy friends from Penn State are gonna be there." And I was like, "You know what?" I looked at my friend Chelsea, and I was like, "Chelsea, like we need to just go. Like you never know who we're gonna meet." Um, and so Chelsea and I showed up that night and we showed up to Tom's apartment with a six pack of Sam Adams winter lager. And classy. <laughs> really classy. And then Tom and I have been together ever since that night. Yep. And you said that when you saw me that night, you have butterflies. Yeah, I was like, wow, she, she looks amazing. And then, but then like once I introduced her into the party and you know, and I was just, Hosting and talking to different people, and we didn't really catch up until like the very end of the night. And we're just like, oh, now that like people are starting to leave and whatnot, let's go to the bar. Um, we just started catching up, and I haven't talked to her in three years at that point because she transferred yeah. when she was a sophomore. Yeah, right. So we had, hadn't talked once. So I was like, oh, like what have you been up to? And we started talking, and then I, um, I found her pretty funny, and I definitely felt some chemistry. And then I invited her the next day for pizza. To watch the Patriots game because he's a Patriots fan, so yeah. he invited me over for the Patriots game. Yeah, I just on a whim, like, hey, do you want to hang out tomorrow? And funny story, I actually drove because I was I was actually living, or I was I was going home at the time, and so I went home that day. And by the time I got home, so my home is like 45 minutes outside the suburbs. By the time I got home, he texted me, hey, do you want to come over? And I literally turned around and drove back into the city. I told you that, right? Yep. Yeah, I like knew, I was like, oh my God, like I have to go hang out with him. Like we had such good chemistry. 
So I went there and then I just stayed at my temple house that night. Um, Must have been one hell of a party. It was one hell of a party. Um, but then we've just been together ever since that night. Like we have talked, I think, every day since that night. Yep. Yeah, then we've been dating for four years. So that was the beginning of December and then we started dating the end of January, like officially dating. So it was like two full months of like just like seeing each other. And like I, we pretty much knew right away because we were just like always hanging out and like always texting. And then I remember like that day that I came home, I went talked, I called my, uh, my other friend Michael and I was like, Mike, like I am going to marry this kid. Like mark my words, I'm going to marry this kid. And I remember exactly where I was when I said it. And I've never said that before. I just knew, like I knew right away. Like I, I just was like, wow, I feel something so different with him than I've ever felt with anyone. Um, and now look, so it's true. It's true, although we haven't got married yet. Not yet, but, but we're on the right track. Um, but, so that's that, so we've been together for four years. We moved in together in August, and it has been amazing since then. Um, we just vibe really well, I think. Yeah. And we don't, like, we don't really have a ton of, like, fights, or, I mean, we really don't have any, but we just don't, we just, like, are, I don't know, we're very happy with each other, we complete each other, and I'll let, you can speak, I know, I'm just, I don't wanna speak for you, but. Yeah, well, we just get along really well, and, you know, I think when you find your, your partner, it just seems very natural, you know, if one person is annoyed or upset, the other person is always there to say, oh, what's going on, how can I help you, and just listening to them, hearing them out. Um, even like, if we're, if we get annoyed with each other, which is rare, we're always like, oh, like, what happened, like, how can I, how can I fix that, and then we move on, like, two seconds later. Yeah. And to me, that shows like, a lot of maturity, and that's what I found early on. I was like, all right, like, this is serious, because I'm, I don't want to be with someone who's just like, you know, there's Immature. couples who are always fighting and they're bringing up all these random things that no one cares about and just creating the drama for attention and we've never had any of that in our relationship and that's no. when I knew it was serious. pretty serious. So then, I guess, moving into our engagement, um, which she didn't know about, uh, that week was our four-year anniversary. It was also her birthday. And I couldn't, and I was proposing at the end of that. So my Saturday. birthday, so our anniversary was on a Wednesday. My birthday was on a Friday, and Tom was proposing on a Saturday. Yep. So uh, that just Wednesday, to set the I just want to set the scene. So that Wednesday, I had to play cool. Um, I picked up the ring before that, like that Friday. So I had it with me in a week. But you want to talk about how you got, like, what? How did you know what ring I wanted? Um, so Erin went with her two friends in like October time frame. So I was like, oh, if you actually want to, if you actually want a ring. You want to get engaged, like you need to go, like figure out what, what you want because we didn't want to go together. Um, so she went with her friends, like on a whim in the fall, like really no pressure, not thinking it would have. I to just walked in. No, I just walked into a. We have a thing called Jewelers Row in Philly. It's like where all the jewelers are. Jewelers are, and I just like was like, hey girls, like let's just go look because like we've been dating for almost four years now. I just want to look just in case because I need to at least know what I like. And honestly, I'm the type of girl that like I've never had like oh that's what I want for like I love that ring. But I knew immediately when I put one on that, like I had an idea and when I put it on, I was like 100%, this is the ring that I want, but. Yeah, so Aaron wanted, so basically the outcome out of that was she, I knew she wanted like a thin band, four prongs. Um, I knew kind of what type of. What color? Rose gold she wanted, uh, her ring size, how big of a diamond she wanted. So I had all that kind of stuff in the back of my head. Um, so then, I started maybe two months ago. I started talking to our two friends. I was like, hey, I'm ready. I want to do it in like January, February time frame. Um, keep her surprised because she thinks it's going to happen in May. Um, I didn't think it was going to happen in May. I just thought that, I just did not think it was going to happen in the winter. I thought honestly like summertime. I, I, we were dating for four years, so I knew that it was like at least on the radar, but I did not think, I wasn't like, oh, it's happening in May. I just thought like it's not happening in the winter. Yeah, that's perfect of what I wanted to build that picture in her head. Yeah. Um, so I started talking to her friends and then we, said, we started setting up appointments and I right, let's go this Saturday. And luckily I'm also a realtor in Philly. Um, well, all of PA, but mostly Philly and in the suburbs. And- Self plug. <laughs> well, because that, that built my story. Because yeah. I, I had a really good alibi of why I, I can't be home um, in places that she probably wouldn't want to go to. So I'm saying, oh, I'm showing someone this house. Um, because at that time I was showing a lot of houses and she was like, okay, fine. So then I would come back. I didn't after. question him at all. Like I thought he was just showing houses. Like what yeah, he always so, does after So work. I would be out for like two and a half, three hours, depending on how many appointments I'd set up. Um, I would come back and Aaron would say, oh, like how are the houses? And like, that was the toughest part for me was just like, lying to you and like, 
I felt very guilty, even though it was for your best interest. Yeah. But I was like, um, so I played it cool. I was like, oh yeah, I just like made up stories of like actual clients I was working with. And I believe them all. Yeah, <laughs> they were very convincing. <laughs> um, so we, we did that, we shopped around. And then once I had a really good idea, um, going from like the beginning of like, I didn't know anything. And then I started doing tons of research because that's the- Oh, where are your notes? You have to get your notes. Uh, this was Tom's notes on ring stuff, all things diamond. But like I, I took this like notepad with me and I went store to store and like by the in the beginning I knew like nothing and they would give me like background and then by the end of it I watched so many YouTube videos and so many articles and was knowing the ins and outs of the actual diamond between behind like the you table ratio, understanding how the light gets in and out, what makes a diamond brilliant, which I thought was just a cliche term, but then I started to understand it. Um, and that's where we went to one jeweler and I saw the actual diamond I've got for Aaron, but it was the most brilliant diamond I saw of them all. It was sparkly and we took it outside and every single direction it sparkled and that's when I knew it was a perfect cut. Um, it actually was a perfect cut, but that really solidified in my eyes, okay, this is, this is where the value is of having and that was most important to me. Um, so I found when the jeweler showed that ring, that diamond, uh, my heart was pounding, and I was like, yep, yep, this feels Aww. very right. <laughs> that's so cute. Um, so that's what I knew. So that, that was a really good sign. And then, you know, Aaron wanted a, a thin band, so I started talking to them because this place, um, they also do custom engagement rings, and I helped them design it, and then they actually gave me a 3D model. Um, they sent me, and I said, all right, can you tweak it this way and that way? So it was really cool because I really had my hands on the design. Um, and sure enough, once we came up with the final design, they actually printed out with a 3D wax casting um, that I got to see on, in real life. And I went down there. And, and you went, and he went to Jewelers Row in Philadelphia. They have mm -hmm. all different shops down there. Um, and I think a lot of them do this type of thing. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you just have to go in, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you have to go in and like just. You need to go feel comfortable with it. Like you need to go ask a bunch of questions, make yourself educated. Tom went over 10 times to different jewelers. Like he brought, my girlfriend the night of the engagement, she came up to me she's like, Tom brought a book every single time, a notebook every single time. And I was like, oh my God. Like, hmm. but you have to, you have to educate yourself. And yeah, especially for a, such a big purchase, I want to make sure that I am getting the best that I can. Right. Um, because it's, Especially, especially with, yeah, with something you're gonna have for the rest of your life, you know. With a car, you might only have five years, but this, probably until like 85 years from now. Yeah. Once we die, but, um, but yeah, so I definitely knew, knew my stuff, and then, so we started doing the 3D castings, and then um, I got to see the ring in person with both the diamond and like the wax, so I could get the physical representation. And I said, yep, yep, that's what, that's what I want. And then we move forward into the casting period, and that's what kind of set the date because it took probably like a month to two months um, for it to actually go through all the casting and get the setting picked out and all that stuff. And that's what kind of set the date. And then in the background, I knew like I would want to have a party afterwards, and I knew that photographer. I wanted a photographer there. That was one thing that I really wanted, just because I thought it would be special to have someone capture all of this. Um, and so I had like mentioned that earlier. I, like I, I, didn't, I gave you some hints, but I never was like, I want a photographer, I want this, I want that. So I was like, you know what? At some point he has to make those decisions. Like this is our engagement. And like, if he wants that there, then he'll get that there. Like I can't only control so much. Um, so I, I mentioned like, I really would love to have a photographer there. I never really, like I, I was like, I would love to have my family and friends there after celebrate, but I, that's all I left it at basically. Yeah, but in my head, obviously that meant I want the photographer <laughs> and I want a party afterwards. No matter what she frames it, I know that's what she wants. Um, so, and I, I, I didn't really care if we had a photographer, but after we got worked with a photographer, seeing seeing the pictures, I was like, wow, so it. it was it was it was really worth it because that moment happened so quick, the day happened so quick, and then you go back and see the photos, and you're like, wow, I am so glad that she was there to take these photos because you see the day from a literally from a different, from lens. different lens, from a different angle. And you can feel the emotion in the pictures. Yeah. Like I had no idea she was there. She was like a ninja. Yeah. And I like, had my hands on my face. Like we can link the, the blog that she posted on her blog mm -hmm. um, of all of our photos. So yeah, so like I went, so once, once the ring was actually done, 
I started contacting my friends, her friends, and I told our family, um, both her and mine, and then... How did you, and you, you asked my dad for permission? I asked my dad, or your dad, um, took me three times. Did your parents know at Christmas? No. Okay. No. So I told them, and then once I told like my brother and his his wife, who they live in Boston, they were like, "Oh my God, we're gonna fly down." I was like, "Wow!" And that's that's what kind of started really sinking in. Like this is really serious, and um, my family's going that extra mile to be there. I told her brother came from D.C., so it was literally planes, trains, and automobiles. My dad flew up um, from all over the place, so. It was really cool to see everyone starting to come together, but I also had in the back of my head, I need to keep it on the DL, because I don't want anyone else knowing. The second Aaron sees one person strange in Philly, like, oh, why is your brother here? I she would, would know. know. Yeah. So I, I would know, like, I'm so observant with everything, so it's, he'll explain how he did everything, but like, I'm shocked that no one slipped to me. I had no idea, I had no idea. Yeah, so I framed it with all of my friends and her friends that basically I'm having a uh, surprise birthday party for Aaron at Lou Birds, which was like a bar like that I was doing close by. Um, so I ended up reserving that out, um, and that was really cool because we had someone to go after. And but I had to orchestrate with her friends, my friends, and most importantly like my family because that would have gave it away. So my brother and his wife flew in that Friday morning from Boston. My birthday. And Aaron, of course, was like doing all her self care for her birthday in the city. I was like, are you kidding me of all days? Um, and I basically put together a PowerPoint of like, all right, here's all the notes I know where Aaron's gonna be at these times. Make sure you avoid it at all costs. Um, and I put together like also like places for them to see. But it was like a seven page well, PowerPoint. Yeah, that, we can flip through like just to show the PowerPoint. Yeah, that they can like, like that. so that way that way they know to avoid those areas. Like, all right, Aaron's gonna be in like the written house area, so make sure you're They showed me the PowerPoint side. after. He like did maps and he put like dots on like where I can be, where I, where they can't be, where they should go for lunch, where they should do this. Yeah. And it was like, where to avoid Aaron. Sylvia will be taking Aaron here. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. It was incredible. Like emergency contacts, like all right, if you need because I didn't want them texting me while while that whole weekend. So if they needed to contact me outside of my normal work hours, it was only via email, so I, I can email and it doesn't seem weird. Um, you also said that with all of my friends too, yeah. right? You were yeah. like, I always do have not my, text me. I always have my phone like, do not disturb, so I didn't like get a random pop-up text like, oh, what time at Lubers? And then all I needed was Aaron to say, what's at Lubers? And boom, it's over. So I was not like a hawk. And sure enough, so um, I actually was going to have um, someone who lives on the street that I proposed on have Aaron over for a party. And then say, hey, um, Aaron, like I'm having a party, please come on over. And that way I had a reason to get her there without any involvement from me. And I can kind of be like, oh, I don't know if I want to go. Because then it seems like I don't even want to be there, so why would, um, why would I push it? But then that week, we had a little panic attack because one friend texted me saying, oh, Aaron doesn't want to go to that party. And I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Of course she doesn't. Well, it was my birthday, and I was like my birthday dinner with my friends that night, and I was like, I don't really want to go. Like, I don't want to go to this party. Like, show up for a little bit, and then have to go out with my friends. Like, I feel bad. I don't know. It's just like I wanted to just go out with my friends and not have to worry about this party. Meanwhile, I have so much plan and riding on that location. It was an important street for me because we always love like those cute little streets in Philly. This is one of the only ones that was all lit up. Um, that I know is always lit up. So I knew like that's the place that I want to do. It's very secluded. There's no one else there. It's just me and her. Um, so it's really cool. And so I knew I wanted to do it on that street. So I came up with the idea that I was going to drop off a rent check because the previous weekend I was showing school clients different rentals. So I said, perfect. I'll drop, pretend I'm dropping off the rent check. So I went that Wednesday, met up with the photographer for the first time. Um, and we walked through it, like where I'm gonna actually propose, where she's gonna be, how we're gonna get there, what time, all that stuff. And I saw a plaque outside a door saying, saying like for rent, and there was a guy's name and the address, and I said, perfect. I'm gonna write this guy's name on an envelope, I'm gonna drop it in this random slot, and then I'll have the photographer text me like earlier that day saying, hey, can you drop the rent check off here? So as we got there, um, and, I, and I showed like what time I wanted to be there, uh, I had the rent check ready to go. I just filled out like a random envelope. I actually wrote a letter saying, hey, if you want to you sell me your house, let me know, I'm a realtor. Hey, you never know, if I get a house out of it, it'd be pretty <laughs> funny. Um, oh, because you did actually drop it in the slot. Yeah, because I actually dropped this envelope in the slot. So, from my perspective, we were getting, we got an Uber, actually we were laying on the couch, it was like 3.30, we were laying on the couch, the girl wasn't even ready, like we were supposed to meet our friends at five, 
on the other side of the city and I was like, oh my God, I really don't feel like going. And we were just like, just like laying down, I'm like, oh my gosh, like we have to go. We're going to this BYO tequila place. Like it's a Mexican restaurant. I was like, I just don't feel like going. I just feel like, like chilling here, but I know it's my birthday. So I kind of have to go. And so like, I'm like, oh, I'm getting ready, like half assed. Like I like literally put, like I had this shirt that was like not cute. I was just like, I was gonna wear ripped jeans and just like little booties. And then I, I was like talking to Chelsea. She's like, what are you wearing tonight? And I was like, I think I'm just wearing jeans. She's, I, but I might wear leather jeans. She's like, you should wear your leather pants. Like that would be so cute. She's like, it's your birthday girl. And I was like, you're right. So I put on like, leather pants, I switched my sweater. Thank God, because I would not be happy if those were my proposal pictures. That yeah. outfit. So then we, so we get it in Uber. We get an Uber and I put the location like right to that, that address, Realtor. which is literally right next to the street that I was gonna walk down. Right next to the street. But, and he had a check in his hand, like he had an envelope with a check in his hand and it had the realtor's name, everything. So I literally was not questioning it at all. I thought we were dropping out the rent check and then we were gonna walk because it made perfect sense to me. Um, and his hands were clammy in the car. And I was like, I was like, why are your hands clammy? Like I was like, I literally was so confused. I was like, For all those guys out there, make sure you put some like biker gloves on <laughs> if you're gonna propose. I was like, why are your hands clammy? He's like, he's like, I, I'm selling my first house. Like I can't believe I'm doing this. And I was like, oh my god, I guess you're right. Like, I, like that's awesome. I'm like, you're so nervous. Like don't be nervous. And then we get to the place, and there it is, Michael Singer Real Estate. And we like go in and pulls up a taxi, and it's like, all right, drop it in the blue slot, like the door with the blue slot. And like, I was like, okay, it's that one right there. And so he like drops it in and I'm like, oh my God, we're gonna be so early for dinner now. Yeah. And because I was reading off the text that I had the photographer send me. So then when I texted the, the photographer back, which in my phone says real estate agent, I said, I dropped off the, the rent check and that's code word, which means we're gonna start walking down that street. So that way she knows ahead of time. So she's not just like looking for like an hour. Right. Um, so I said, all right, like I looked up my phone. I was like, all right, we, to get to this restaurant, we gotta go one street this way, we got like five streets that way. You're like, let's go this way. And, I, and I'm thinking in my head, that's where that party is that I was invited to. I'm not going down that street because they're gonna see me. Yeah, so I was like, so she said that, and I was kind of like, oh shoot, how am I gonna drag her over there? And I was like, oh, like, don't worry about it. Like, we'll be quick, and who cares? And I, she, luckily she didn't really give me a tough time. Maybe she knew at that point. But I started like walking down um, and then once we got to the end of the street. Well, I knew as we were walking down the street because his hands were sweating bullets. Sweaty hands. Are you gonna climb me now? No. No. Um, but then like, at that point I was like, all right, we already got there. Like, she's gonna know in two seconds anyway. So then I kind of like talked about us and like our conversations from like the previous night at dinner and then got on, uh, got on a knee, asked her and then I think she was pretty shocked and then the photographer like, was like a ninja, it wasn't there at all. Um, I had no idea there was a photographer there. But I remember like when you asked me, I was like, I was so confused, I was just like, oh my God, this is happening, like what? Like, I, and all I, think, all I could think about in my head was like, I was like so excited and I'm just freaking out. And I'm like, oh my God, what? Like this is not happening. I'm like, are we going to Cafe Inez? Like is that, are we going to dinner there still? I'm so confused, are our friends there? I was like, oh my God, I was so confused. Yeah, and then I showed her, I was like, there's Laura. Like Laura was the photographer, it was just like absolutely incredible. I'm like, you know this lady? Um, and she took pictures of all us and then on. Like, she was like in shock, we took a few pictures in that area. And then Aaron's like, oh, like, do our families know? I was like, yeah, our families know. And then I texted them saying, hey, come over. We took like a group shot. In well, the and then when they came down, I was like, oh my God, because I saw his brother and his sister-in-law and his parents, and they're not from Philadelphia. So it's like, it was really special. My brother yeah. came up and my parents were there and they all came down and we all took like group photos. And I was just like, oh my God, like what? Like, well, then my mom was like, we have to go close our tab. Which I told them to say that. Like, oh, we have to go close our tab at Lou Bird's. Um, Cause she was like, oh, do our friends know? I'm like, yeah, some of them know, but we might see some of them later. And she said, okay. So then we walk into Bird's, and all of our friends were packed out there as a big surprise. And then it was a shock round two. Um, I was like, I walk in and I see everyone that like, it was just so cool. It was like a bunch of girls that, I, that I'm friends with from Instagram, it was a bunch of our friends from Penn State. It was a bunch of friends just in my friend group from home. And it was just, there was just so many people there. Um, it was really something special. We were all packed into this place and there was two signature cocktails for us. Yeah, there was a lot of like behind the scenes where I work with the, the owner of the bar and said, all right, can you make an Aaron special, a Tom special, what do you guys like? Um, I got, I had, mine was a watermelon margarita, in case you're wondering, it was delicious, they used fresh watermelon juice. It was really good. Um, so then, yeah, after that we just like celebrate with everybody. Um, the photographer, Laura, took a bunch of pictures, which was really cool because then later you go back and you look at them and like it all happened so fast and you can see, all right, like, so cool with everyone's facial expressions and the emotion. 
And then after that, I had reservations set up at Audrey Claire, um, which is a few blocks up. This is a nice restaurant in Philly. So that was just for our families. Yeah, just like the nine of us, because like I pretty much didn't talk to my parents. My parents have been in. My brother has been for two days. I still haven't seen him or talked to him. Yeah. Um, and I just want to like, see like all my friends at the party first, and then we were able to just all kind of catch up at dinner. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. And so after dinner, we went out to the bar. We were just kind of living on cloud nine and I got like four hours of sleep that next, then the next morning because I was just so excited and high on life. And we just celebrated the rest of the day and the Super Bowl was that night. And we had friends over and we went to brunch with Tom's parents and it was just the best weekend ever. And Yeah, the most important thing for me was the surprise and I like- And he nailed it. Like I had no freaking clue. I had no freaking clue. None. And people would ask like, oh, are you nervous? Are you nervous? And I wasn't nervous because I've known for like over a year that I'm gonna propose at this time. I was like mentally, emotionally prepared. But the most important thing was if I could keep it a secret. Like I didn't want Erin to find out at any point in time. Like if she found out on a Friday or leading up, like it ruins every surprise. That... Yeah, like if I would've saw his brother and sister in the city, I would've yeah. been like, why are they here? So all that hard work paid off. Yeah. Love you. Love you. I'm really excited. The next steps. Woo! Okay, so I got, like, this is my first little bit of wedding planning. I got the Knot Guide to Weddings. Everyone suggested that I needed to get this, so this is my first official book. Um, and then I'm just going to start the wedding process. We're gonna, we're gonna do it all slow. We're gonna take a little bit of time and enjoy it and just try to enjoy the whole process. We're not in our rush, um, so we'll see. It will definitely be over a year, um, but yeah, we're really excited. Right? Sorry. Love you. Love you.